This is another problem from the 2019 final exam. It's a proof you're supposed to, to know, so let me go through it. Uh, you're to use this theorem. In an affine plane of order n, each line contains exactly n points. And you're to prove from this theorem and the axioms for a finite affine plane that in an affine plane of order n, each line L has at least n minus 1 lines parallel to it. Okay, so we're trying to show there exists n minus 1 lines, at least that many, that are parallel to a given line L. So we want to, again, use, use this theorem one as well. So let me start the proof here. Let L be an arbitrary line. This is important. We don't want to be taking L, for example, uh, the existence of L from, uh, from our axioms, using them somehow like axiom A2. We want to take an arbitrary line L and we want to show for an arbitrary line L that it has n minus 1 lines parallel to it, possibly more. OK. By what there is a point P1 not on L? So how do we know there's a point P sub 1 not on L? Well, it's axiom A1. Axiom A1 tells us there's four points, no three of which are collinear. So all four of those points can't be on L. So axiom A1 is telling us that one of those four points is not on L. In fact, two of them are not on L. I only care about one of them. So axiom A1 will imply that there is a point P sub 1 not on L. By what? Line L has at least one point, say P sub 2, on it. So how do we know that L has at least one point on it? That's theorem one. Theorem one is telling us, in fact, there's n points on it. n is going to be at least one. It's a positive integer. So by theorem one, L has at least one point that's on it. So P1 is not on L, and P2 is on L. From what, there's a line L prime passing through both P1 and P2. That was axiom A3. Axiom A3 said that if you're given two points, there has to be a line that passes through them. In fact, exactly one. So axiom A3 is giving us the line L prime. Since what? We have that L prime is not equal to L. Well, L prime passes through both P1 and P2, but L only went through P2. P1 was not on L. So since P1 is not on L and it is on L prime, that would tell us that L prime can't be equal to L. Okay. What implies that P2 is the only point on both L prime and L? That would be axiom A3 again. If you have two different points, there only can be one line that passes through them. That's the exactly part of axiom A3. There's exactly one line that passes through two points. So we can't have two points that lie on both L prime and L. There will only be one line that passes through two points. So this is axiom A3. This has two blanks in it. By what, L prime has exactly blank points on it, two of which are P1 and P2. Well, I know L prime went through P1 and P2. Can there be other points on it? No, that's not really what this is asking. This is asking you to use that theorem. That theorem told you there's exactly n points on every line. So we know that L prime has exactly n points by the theorem. So as far as this goes, um, that's going to be theorem 1, and this is going to be n. So theorem one tells us L prime has exactly n points on it. Well, I'm being covered up a little bit here. Let's see if I can push that out of the way here. 
let P3 through Pn denote the remaining points on L prime. Okay. Again, we know there's uh, n points on it. We have both P1 and P2 are on L prime. So I'm just going to call the other points P3 through Pn because we know there has to be a total of exactly n points on L prime. OK, obviously, there's no room left. And what I'm going to do is to put a picture up at the top now that shows you where we're at. So we started with this line L and this P1 that was not on L. And then we got this P2 that was on L. And then we took a line L prime that passed through P1 and P2. And then we just said there had to be these other points now uh, on L prime. So that L prime has a total of n points. One of them is P2 that's on L and the other ones are not on L because one of the things we said was that L and L prime can only have one point in common and that's the P2. For each J not equal to two, P sub J is not an L. So that what implies that there is a line L sub J passing through P sub J and parallel to L. Okay, well that's gonna be axiom A4. That was exactly what axiom A4 was saying. If I have a line L and a point that's not on L, then there has to be a parallel line passing through that point, a parallel line to L. So we're getting this parallel line, we're gonna call L sub J passing through P sub J and parallel to L. And that's true for every P sub J except for P sub two, since P sub two is on L. So we get those parallel lines. Each such L sub J is different from L prime since L prime intersected L at P2. They had a point in common. So since L prime intersects L and the other lines are parallel to it, uh, they can't be equal to L prime, the other lines. So L prime intersects L and L sub J does not. So L prime is different from the L sub J. You might remember that the reason for having L prime different from the L sub J is actually so that we can say the L sub J's are distinct. So let's see how that goes. It follows that the lines L sub G are distinct. They're different um, for J not equal to two here. The N minus one lines we were just talking about by what? And the hint here is that the what should be telling us that since L prime is a unique line passing through A to of the P sub J's. Why is there just one line that passes through two of the P sub J's? The P sub J's were the end points on L prime. They're the end points, so they're different. And so we have these different points. If we have two of them, there can only be one line passing through them by axiom A3. Axiom A3 says, again, there's exactly one line that passes through two distinct points. So what we're looking for is axiom A3 here, but let's see if this actually makes sense here. Why would that mean the lines L sub J are distinct? Why couldn't L3 and L6 be the same here? Well, if they were the same, you would have one line passing through P3 and P6, because they would be the same line. But again, the only line that passes through two of these is L prime. So that one line would have to be L prime, but L prime is different from the L sub J's. That was what we just concluded. This was the reason we gave for that. L prime intersects L and the L sub J did not. L prime is different from the L sub J's. And so it's not possible that this L3 equal to L6 is equal to L prime. So you can't have two lines going through both of these points. So that's what's going on there. That we have that the L sub J have to be distinct. Otherwise, you're gonna have two lines going through two points and that would make uh, a contradiction by ax from axiom A3. Thus, there are at least n minus one distinct lines parallel to L, namely the L sub J. That's what we just showed. We had all these lines parallel to L and they were all distinct. 
So that gives us what we want. We're trying to prove there's at least n minus one distinct lines parallel to L, and we have the proof here. So that finishes this proof, and that finishes this problem as well as this lecture.